I see a lot of people looking to start their own web design business, but they often fail at the first hurdle because they're not actually able to secure their very first paying client. And this is due to the fact that they have either little or no experience at all within web design. Now, the fact that when starting out, you have very little experience isn't actually the problem here. And today I'm gonna to share with you how I managed to secure my very first paying web design client. I'm gonna share with you some things that I know now that I didn't know back then and I wish I did. And I'm gonna talk you through how you can go about securing yours as well. Now starting a web design business can be so incredibly daunting. Like I remember when I started mine, it was so scary, but I had to land that first paying client in order for it to be a success. So I just wanna be clear that when I landed my client, I didn't really have a lot of experience. Yes, I went to university to study web development. So I knew how to build websites. I kind of knew how to design them, but I absolutely didn't know how to sell the service. And with that said, I was still a pretty crap designer. But in order for me to generate money through a web design business, I had to just dive in. So the way that I managed to secure my first web design client, it was a friend knows a friend type situation. So I actually had a friend who had a friend where his parents owned a hotel and they were looking for a website. Hopefully you can keep up. And somehow, my name was thrown into the mix and I got contacted by these hotel owners saying that they need a new website, which was perfect. I remember having to go meet these two hotel owners with very little experience and I won't lie, I was absolutely terrified. I remember turning up with a list of questions because I knew how important it was to kind of gather requirements. It really doesn't hurt to prepare and write a list of questions if you're not really confident in the type of things that you need to be asking. You know, prepare that before you go and make sure that you ask them when you're there because it's really gonna help you with understanding their business and what they are looking for. Now, despite having experience within design school, I didn't actually have a portfolio of work to show them. So I had to rely on my level of confidence and just try and make them aware that I know what I'm doing and I'm able to deliver the website to them. And that purely comes down to just being confident. Now, if you're not actually very experienced in web design, it really doesn't matter. There's a rule that you have to be the smartest guy in the room around the topic that you are talking about. So as long as you know a little bit more about websites than the person that you're talking to, that is gonna make you the expert. Now, if you're meeting a prospect that needs a website, the chances are you are already gonna know more than them. So don't worry about that. You are the expert and you need to push out that confidence. So after speaking to these website owners, I actually managed to sell it for, I think it was 600 pounds, which is around $750. So it's not a large figure, but I'm actually really happy with that as well. And the website that I produced, I'm just gonna chuck up on screen now, and you'll see that it's a pretty basic box standing website. It's kind of gnarly looking in the form of colors, but also very basic and, and clear as well. So this was actually done quite a few years ago and comparing this to what is possible these days, uh, to be fair, for what they paid, it actually looks okay. So let's move on to the part that you are actually here for. How do you guys get your very first paying web design client? Now, let's assume that you don't have a portfolio and you don't really have any experience within web design. No matter the case, you still need to find that first person that's gonna give you a chance. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this. Way number one is to rely on freelancer websites such as Upwork, Fiverr.com and Freelancer.com. And you can position yourself as a freelancer to start with if you want, or you can position yourself as an agency, it's totally up to you. But basically all of the work that you'll find on there are people who need your services, so you can go ahead and pitch to them. Alternatively, you can rely on asking friends and family on the likes of Facebook or dropping people a message that you know. There is absolutely no shame in this. When getting started, you need to get your name out there and you need to make people aware that you now offer this service. So don't be afraid to ask people closest to home. And finally, another great way for you to get started and find people looking for help is to go and join some Facebook groups. There are loads of groups out there around web design or e-commerce and, and that whole digital marketing space that you will stumble across someone who is looking for help and you can directly message them or comment on their post and just get in contact with them. Tell them that you're an expert and you're able to help and then spark a conversation that way. 
Now, once you've found someone that needs your help, awesome. You now then have to talk to them. And the biggest thing that you need to make sure you do is be confident. Even if you're not confident, pretend to be confident because if you don't sound confident on the phone or in person, they're gonna know that and then they're not going to trust you and you're probably not gonna win that work. When you are talking to them, you need to use this as an opportunity to learn as much as you possibly can about their business, what their goals are, where they're at, where they're looking to go, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The more information that you can gather, the better job you can do with producing a website that is gonna help them get there. When I first started out, the type of questions that I would ask tend to circulate around how they wanted their website to look. And actually, this isn't all that important because you need to use the website as a byproduct to get them to where they want to be. So you need to focus on what their goals are and where they wanna go. Do they wanna increase more sales? Do they wanna increase bookings? Are they looking for more brand awareness? Those types of things. And then you can put together a website that is gonna allow them to do that. Yet, of course, it's probably somewhat important to them that they have their logo on there in a particular way or they follow the brand colors or what font they use, the types of imagery they use, and all that is fine. I absolutely think that they should have input on that. But the whole how the website should be structured and things like that, I think should be left down to the designer based off the information that you have gathered from them. As I mentioned earlier, there's absolutely no shame with preparing questions and turning up with a list of questions for you to read out and ask them in order to gather that information. Now, as a starting point, absolutely do that. Once you get more comfortable with it, you'll find that you'll understand what questions you need to be asking and then you don't need a sheet at all. One final thing to know is when getting started, you need to price yourself fairly. Now, I'm not saying here that you need to undervalue yourself, but you definitely can't be pricing yourself up there in line with people that have been doing this for years because you a business will pay for your services and you might not be able to deliver the quality. If you can, perfect. Price as high as you like, as long as the value and the quality is there. But what I'm trying to say here is be prepared to drop your price slightly lower in order to secure your first gig. It doesn't really matter how much you make from this project because the experience that you're gonna gain throughout the whole of it is so invaluable. So I kind of recommend that you maybe price yourself anywhere from like 250 pounds up to a thousand pounds. I think that's a great starting point. But guys, just make sure you don't end up over promising and under delivering because this isn't gonna look good on your business and that business that you've done work for is not gonna come back and they're definitely not gonna refer you to anyone else. Now always strive to do fantastic work and go above and beyond for the people that give you a chance because nine times out of 10, they will recommend you to other business owners that you know and that is how you're gonna grow your business. So there you go guys, hopefully you now understand what you need to do to land your first web design client and it's really not as difficult as you think. Now I am gonna produce a few more videos like this on how I managed to secure my first 1,000 pound client my 2,000 pound client, 3,000 pound client, et cetera, et cetera. And just give you the tools and the systems that you need in order to start landing some real high ticket clients. So before I go, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to be notified of those future releases. There are tons of other videos on this channel which are designed to help you improve your web design business. So absolutely go and check those out. And that's it for now guys. And I will catch you in the next video.